Hi, welcome back to Open Edgeware Learn and Teach. I'm Rajiv and this is video 4 of our course series Introduction to Microcontroller Programming. And in this video, we're going to learn about a popular and special type of microcontroller called 8051. In the last video, we learned about a few components or peripherals inside a microcontroller. For example, we learned about ROM, which is also called program memory because it stores the list of instructions that a microcontroller needs to execute. CPU is responsible for performing all these list of instructions given by the program in a sequence. However, this sequence can be interrupted if something called an interrupt is called and the CPU is asked to perform some other instruction instead. Each instruction in a microcontroller has to be completed within a specified time. And so there is a timer in a microcontroller which keeps record of the time. Oscillators are used in microcontroller to act as a reference of time. Oscillators are pulses which oscillate between 0 and 1. And this period, this period acts as a reference of time for the timer. The status of work done by CPU is stored in another memory which is called RAM. Now this RAM and ROM are two different kinds of memories. We know this uh, microcontroller is powered by a power supply and when there is no power supply the contents inside this memory called ROM remain intact while the contents inside this memory called RAM are lost. That means the status of all the work done by CPU is lost and therefore when power supply is turned off and on again a CPU has to start working right from the first instruction. A microcontroller also has input output ports which can take data from the outside world and can send data to the outside world. So these are responsible for data in or out to the outside world. Microcontroller can also communicate to the outside world through some other protocols like UART, SPI and I2C about which we are going to learn later. This was what we learned in our last video. In this video we are going to learn how the different components or peripherals we studied earlier measure up in a special type of microcontroller called 8051 type. 8051 was an architecture first brought by Intel in somewhere around 1980s. And this architecture became so popular that nowadays most microcontrollers have either 8051 type of architecture or an architecture which is similar to it. The 8051 microcontroller brought by Intel had 4 kilobyte of ROM memory or program memory as we call it. Now what does it mean? We know 1 kilobyte means 2 to the power 10 bytes. So 4 kilobyte is 4 into 2 to the power 10 or 2 to the power 12 bytes. Now in the tic-tac-toe game that we played in our second video, we saw how the game had 9 cells, each numbered from 0 to 8, and each cell could contain either x or 0, that is 1 bit instruction. Now imagine each cell being able to contain 8 bit instructions in a 3 dimensional sort of way, and 2 to the power 12 such cells will give you 4 kilobyte of memory. Now this this memory size sets the limitation on how much instructions, how many instructions you can ask the CPU to perform. Similarly, 8051 has 128 bytes of RAM in which the CPU stores uh, some temporary data or the status of certain types of work done by it. We have also two timers which is called timer 0 and timer 1, five different types of interrupts which can be used to disrupt the sequence of instructions that CPU is performing. We'll learn about these interrupts in more detail in subsequent videos. We also have four input-output ports and each port has eight pins. So there are 32 input-output pins through which you can send data to outside world or you can collect data from the outside world. This microcontroller can also communicate to the outside world through UART or serial communication. Serial communication has two lines called receive and transmit lines RX and TX through which serial data can be sent to or from the device. 
If the memory available inside 8051 type of microcontroller is not sufficient, one can add external memory up to 64 kilobytes to this device. These are some of the features of 8051 microcontroller which we'll be looking at in detail in this course. But before that, let us have a look at how a 8051 microcontroller physically looks like. This is how a 8051 microcontroller looks like. It is a 40 pin IC and comes in different packages. This picture in particular is of a 8051 microcontroller in a dual inline package. Now let us have a look at the pinout of the 8051 microcontroller. As you can see, this microcontroller has 40 pins and each pin serves one or more purposes. Pin 40 and pin 20 in this microcontroller are to provide power supply to this IC. Pin 40 or VCC is connected to uh, typically 5 volts and pin 20 is connected to ground. Pin 18 and pin 19 which are called XTAL2 and XTAL1 are connected to an external oscillator to provide a reference of time for this microcontroller. As mentioned earlier, the 8051 microcontroller has four ports called port 0, port 1, port 2 and port 3. Pin number 32 to 39 is called port 0. Pins 21 to 28 are called port 2. Similarly, pins 1 to 7 are port 1 and pins 10 to pin 17 are called port 3. Each of the pins within each port has its own labeling like P1.0, P1.1, P1.2 and so on. Each pin of port 0, port 2 and port 3 perform one more additional function. For example, we learnt how you can interface up to 64 kilobytes of external memory with the microcontroller. 64 kilobyte signifies 2 to the power 16 bytes. To address these 2 to the power 16 bytes, we need at least 16 address lines which are provided by pins of port 0 and port 2. This is why each pins of port 0 and port 2 are labeled from AD0 to A15, each pin denoting one address line. You can also write 8-bit data to the external memory using the pins of port 0. Pins P3.0 and P3.1 of port 3 are used to communicate to other devices using serial communication. Pin P3.0 is called RxD and this is the receiving line and pin P3.1 is called TxD which is the transmitting line. Pins P3.2 and P3.3 are hardware interrupts called INT0 and INT1. This means they can be used to disrupt the sequence of instructions performed by microcontroller. This bar above INT0 represents that these pins are active low. That is, the interrupt becomes active when these pins are pulled low. Pins P3.4 and P3.5 called T0 and T1 can be used to count events into timer 0 and timer 1 of the microcontroller. Pins P3.6 and P3.7 are used to read and write data to the external memory of the microcontroller. Pins 29, 30 and 31 are used when we store our program in external memory. In order to use the program stored in internal memory, we need to turn the pin 31 or VPP of the microcontroller high. Pin 9 of the microcontroller is called reset. Enabling this pin forces the microcontroller to start executing instructions from the start. This was the pin configuration of 8051 microcontroller. We will understand this better when we start using the controller practically. In our next video, we will be looking at how to use and program the input output ports of the 8051 microcontroller.